Hi everyone, I'm Matt DeFanis, broker owner of Remax Realty Associates with offices located throughout the Champaign County area here in central Illinois. I'm coming to you with a real estate market update for the Champaign-Urbana area as of the last half of May. Stay tuned for details and data about where the market has been this spring, how it got this way, and what this means for you if you were either a buyer or an upcoming seller in this area. Now, as has been the case virtually everywhere in the country, the market has been crazy here. Inventory shortages have been the major headline. Now, we're incredibly blessed by a strong local economy. However, it is not as though Google has opened some new tech center with 10,000 jobs and we can't build houses fast enough to keep pace with population increases. Instead, what seems to be causing the current issue is a short term mismatch between supply and demand. Buyers seem to be in the market in unusually strong numbers at the usual time of year. Under normal market conditions, buyers hit the market in late winter and are typically in full force, meaning when they're doing their showings and signing purchase offers during the months of March, April, and May. That would normally taper significantly during the first week or two of June. Now, that tapering off happens for multiple reasons. First, the most common lease cycle throughout our market runs from July 31st to July 31st. Anyone wanting to buy and move ahead of that lease end date realistically has to be under contract no later than early June or else they won't be able to make that happen. Now, buyers doing a 60 or 90 day closing or if they're willing to close earlier than their lease end date, they may be in that strike zone starting as early as March. Even buyers who are not themselves in a lease may still be forced onto this time frame if they're selling their current house to someone who is on a lease. The other common drivers of peak season are school registration deadlines for families with school-aged children and the large number of jobs that the University of Illinois starts just ahead of the fall semester. All these factors are placing serious buyers in the market at the usual time of year. Now, shifting over to the supply side, listings by month are running relatively close to where they were last year. However, last year was already down markedly from every one of the eight preceding years. And so we now are on a relatively long-term streak of reduced supply. This has caused our number of months of supply to dwindle every single month since the pandemic began. The trend actually started a bit before that even in October of 2019. It has now been uninterrupted dwindling months of supply for 19 months straight. One historic area of supply that does not completely show up in the MLS is new construction. Above $275,000 or so in recent years, there's always been the option to increase the supply by building more homes. Our area's most prolific home builder did an email blast to all local realtors recently, advising us that the same floor plan construction costs have shot up between $45,000 and $80,000 just since last year. Because of the sharp increase in price and the ongoing supply chain issues that impact building supplies, that particular builder is skipping spec homes this year. Those are the homes that builders would build for sale without having a buyer lined up in advance. They're focusing instead solely on custom built homes where they don't start the construction until they already have a buyer under contract. So we know new construction definitely represents a portion of the market where supply has been limited and prices have spiked significantly. While the reduced supply trend that goes back to early 2020 caused the market to heat up noticeably last year, it was certainly not an unprecedented level. 2021, on the other hand, has been totally unlike anything in modern history. We don't have an official graph or a metric to show you how many buyers are swirling around actively looking in the market, but not yet under contract. I would tell you the best informal metric is the number of offers per listing, and that's not even formally recorded. I had clients earlier this spring who lost out on a house priced at $200,000 where there were more than 30 bids. Half a dozen offers or more has become, has become commonplace. Sales prices ending up ten dollars or $20,000 above already bullish list prices have been the norm for mainstream affordable housing options because of the intense bidding wars. So the big question right now becomes, well, what's the underlying cause of all of this and how long is it going to last? My best guess is that 2020 caused a lot of households not to move in their typical time frames. For the first time ever, it became very common for a great many people in our mainstream $250,000 to $400,000 price range to work full-time from home, including sometimes switching jobs and employer cities, all without having to move, at least not yet. 
Keep in mind that we here in Champaign County boast the highest level of education in the state. So a higher percentage of our good paying jobs are intellectual in nature. That means they're less likely to require showing up at a physical work location during the pandemic. I'll give you an example of this. One of my listings that sold this spring was purchased by a University of Illinois faculty member who had previously been employed at another state university hours away. She'd been on the faculty here for nearly a year before she actually moved from her former employer's locale to her new employer's city. With the feeding frenzy still ongoing, but slightly less intense, what does the forecast look like? Well, this extreme feeding frenzy environment is simply not sustainable. There's only so many houses a reasonable buyer will be willing to lose, and there's only so high that such a buyer can afford to bid before deciding to skip the market this year and just rent or not move at all. Those decisions, the I'm not going to move or I'm not going to buy this year decisions, are likely coming for many people in the next two or three weeks. At the same time, last year saw June and July as the busiest listing months. If that were to hold true this year, it could go a long way to help balance supply with demand. We always have some percentage of households that know they're going to be moving, but they can't get their homes ready or uh, on the market fully until the school year is over. With the number of people working and learning from home still, this is likely affecting more households than usual. So what does this mean for buyers who have not yet purchased and sellers whose homes are not yet on the market? Well, let's talk buyers first. If you're a potential buyer, flex your schedule if you can. If you're in a rental, see if you can pay a premium to go month to month so that you can move in the off season. Some landlords may not charge you that premium on the monthly rent, but will instead let you out early if you provide plenty of notice and pay a flat fee of say two months rent. That would let you sidestep the feeding frenzy that is limited to a very specific moment in time and buy when things have cooled off. Now, if you're a seller, I encourage you to get your home on the market as soon as reasonably possible. The market remains very favorable to sellers right now. It is surely going to cool off in the weeks and months ahead. If you won't be ready for a few months, I don't see anything alarming that's going to indicate that we're suddenly going to swing from the strongest seller's market in modern history to somehow suddenly having a glut of listings that would make your home tough to sell. Instead, I anticipate better than average off-season pricing and market timing, just not the instant feeding frenzy with dozens of offers that we saw over the last several weeks. So I hope you found this content useful. Of course, every client and every home is different, so please do not hesitate to reach out for individualized advice and information. My team and I would be honored to assist you in any way we can.